Hello and welcome to this video on completing the square. Now what it means to complete the square is when we have a quadratic expression like this, like x squared plus something x and maybe plus something else or minus something else, and we need to put it in the form x plus or minus something, some constant, some number, in a bracket squared and then maybe some constant after it as well. So notice with this form here that x only appears once and it appears in a bracket that's being squared and that's known as completing the square. Now how do we do this? Well, let's just say we were to expand x plus 3 squared. Now if we did that, let's write out the bracket twice. What we get is we get the x times the x, which is x squared. We get x times 3, which is 3x. We get 3 times x, which is 3x. And we get 3 times 3, which is 9. And if we simplify that by collecting these like terms, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now notice that when we squared this, that number there, the 3, because we had it twice here, that 3 got doubled to get 6. And that's going to help us with a method which we'll see in a second. Also notice that we're going to get 3 squared as well, we get this 9. But we don't want that 9 here, do we? We just want x squared plus 6x. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw away that 9 by just subtracting the 9. So that means that x squared plus 6x, we start with x plus 3 squared. And that gives us, we know x squared plus 6x plus 9, but we don't want that 9, we're going to throw it away by subtracting 9. So in general, what we do is whatever that number is in front of x, the coefficient of x as we call it, we halve it to get to this number here. And then whatever that number is squared, we subtract it. So we square it and subtract it. And the reason we do that is because we know this gets us x squared plus 6x plus 9. We don't want the 9, so we throw it away. Let's do another example. Let's say we had x squared uh, minus 8x. Well, we start by halving the number in front of the x, so it's going to be x minus 4, because half of minus 8 is minus 4. We square it. Now, in your head, if you were to expand this out, we'd have x squared. We'd have minus 8x as well, but another term we get, we'd have like a minus 4 times a minus 4, which is positive 16. Now, we don't want the 16. There's no 16 there. And again, we have to throw it away. So we square that number. Minus 4 squared is positive 16, and then we throw it away. So there's always a minus after this squared bracket. It's never a plus there. And another one, we had x squared plus uh, 12x. We halve that number, so it's going to be x plus 6 squared, and then we square that number, it's 36, and we throw it away. And that will then be right. A mistake that students often make is to accidentally write x plus 6x, because they halve the 12x to get 6x, when really you should just be halving the number on front of the x. So you halve the 12 to get 6. You don't put 6x there. Now let's do some more examples. We've got, firstly, x squared plus 6x plus 5. So, we do the usual thing to get this x squared plus 6x. We halve the 6 to get 3, so it's x plus 3 squared. Now, we don't want that 3 squared, that plus 9, so we're going to throw it away. But we still have this plus 5 here, so we're going to put the plus 5 there. And then if we simplify that, we're going to have x plus 3 squared well, what's minus 9 plus 5? Well, that's minus 4, isn't it? Let's do another example. So you've got x squared minus 8x plus 21. So as before, we halve the minus 8, which gives us minus 4. So it's x minus 4 squared. That number squared is 16, so we throw away 16. But we still have that plus 21 there. So that gives us x minus 4 squared. And minus 16 plus 21 is plus 5. Here's another one. We got x squared plus 2x. So we halve the 2 to get 1, so it's x plus 1 squared. And then we square that and then throw it away, so it's minus 1. And there's no number on the end, so we don't need to do anything further. And then this one, we got x squared minus 3x plus 1. We halve the minus 3, which is minus. 3 over 2, isn't it? Or you could put minus 1.5 if you like. So that's squared, and then we have to square that. What's minus 3 over 2 squared? Well, it's positive 9 over 4. So we subtract 9 over 4, 
and we've got to add 1. Now here's a little clever trick, you could write 1 as 4 over 4. 4 over 4 would be 1, wouldn't it? And that just makes it easier to add these together. So we've got x minus 3 over 2 squared. Well, minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5, so it's minus 5 over 4. Now where it gets harder is when we have a number in front of the x squared term. So let's just say that we had 2x squared plus 4x. And we can't do it the same way, but what we do is we just have an additional first step. And that is, whatever number is in front of the x squared, we first factorise it out of the first two terms. So we can see the number in front of x squared is 2, so we take out the 2, brackets, and then 2 times what is 2x squared? Well, it's x squared. 2 times what is 4x? Well, it's plus 2x. And then what you do is you complete the square with this expression in the bracket. So let's just write the two brackets first. And then we complete the square with x squared plus 2x. Now we had that question earlier. It's going to be x plus half of 2 is 1, so 1 squared. And then we square that and subtract it, minus 1. And notice all of this is happening inside the bracket. So make sure when you complete the square, it's still inside this outer bracket. Also notice that we have a bracket within a bracket, so don't get confused by that. And then the last step is you expand out the outer bracket. So we're going to have 2 times x plus 1 squared, which is just 2 times x plus 1 squared. And then we do 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2. And then we indeed have it in the form something brackets x plus something squared. Let's something x plus something squared, then plus c. And don't be confused by the fact we have minus 2, because minus 2 could be written as plus negative 2. So the c could be negative 2. It's the same thing. Right, let's do these other ones. We've got 3x squared plus 12x plus 5. So as before, we factorise out the number in front of the x squared out of the first two terms. We can leave the 5 alone. So we've got 3 brackets x squared plus 3 times what is 12x, where it's 4x. And then we've got the plus 5 on the end, which we're just going to leave alone. And then, as before, we're going to complete the square with the thing inside the bracketed expression. So I tend to like to write the rest of it first. So we've got this, and then we can just concentrate on this. So what we do is we halve the number in front of the x, so 4 gets halved to 2, and then we minus that squared, which is 4, and then let's just expand out the bracket. So we've got 3 times x plus 2 squared, which is 3x plus 2 squared. We got 3 times minus 4, which is minus 12. Now that 5 is outside the bracket, so it doesn't get multiplied by anything, so we get that. And then let's just tidy up a bit. We have 3x plus 2 squared, and minus 12 plus 5 is minus 7. Now one more of these. We've got 3 minus 4x minus x squared. Now I first recommend writing in order where we have the x squared term first, then the x term, and then the constant term. So I'm going to write this as with the x squared term first, so minus 1x squared. I'm just going to put a 1 in there because it's implicitly there. And then we've got minus 4x, and then we've got plus 3. That 3 is positive. So, as before, we factorise out whatever numbers in front of the x squared. In this case, it's minus 1. So it's minus 1 brackets, and then minus 1 times what is x squared? It's just x squared. And minus 1 times what is minus 4x? It's plus 4x. And then we've got that plus 3 outside the bracket again. And then we complete the square inside this bracket. I'm going to write everything else first, as before. So we complete the square. It's x plus 2 squared minus 4 again. We saw that earlier. Then we expand out the outer bracket, so it's minus 1 x plus 2 squared. Minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4. And then we've got the plus 3 there, so that then becomes minus 1 x plus 2 squared plus 7. And that is the correct answer. Now often when we have a negative thing and we're adding something to it, we can make it a bit neater by putting the positive thing first. So I'm going to write 7 and then minus 1 x plus 2 squared. We don't need that 1, so I'm just going to write that. And that would be a slightly tidier way of writing your answer, but that's absolutely fine. Right, some test your understanding questions. I've got this here, and I want you to put it in the form x plus a squared plus b. And then I've got one of these harder ones, which is 3x squared minus 18x plus 11. 
and I want you to put in the form a brackets x plus b squared plus c. So you may want to pause the video now to have a go at those. Right, let's do this. So we just half the minus 10 to get minus 5, so it's x minus 5 squared. Square that, which is 25, and subtract it, so it's minus 25. We still got the plus 23. And then let's just tidy up. That's x minus 5 squared minus 2, because minus 25 plus 23 is minus 2. Now this one, we just factorise out the 3 in front of the x squared, so it's 3. And then these two terms here, 3 times what is 3x squared? We've got x squared. 3 times what is minus 18x? Well, it's minus 6x. And then we've got the plus 11 there. And then I'm going to write this stuff here first and then complete the square inside the bracket. So that would be x minus 3 squared minus 9. Expand out the outer bracket. So it's 3 times x minus 3 squared. 3 times minus 9 is minus 27. We've still got that plus 11 there. And then that just tidies up to 3x minus 3 squared minus 16. And well done if you got that right.